Welcome back to 4 Minutes with 4 Pro. Now, I did a review on my plate carrier, which included the speaking or talking about the STAC plate carriers, some battle belt stuff, and one of the things that I touched on, I talked about the bow attach, uh, level 4 battle steels, which, you know, I've received some heat for. But again, guys, to kind of reiterate, if you can't afford a $1,400 set of HESCOs or a $1,000 set of HESCOs or a $900 set of HESCOs, something is better than nothing. The Bowtash Battle Steels, Mr. Guns and Gears, several other guys have reviewed them, showed detailed footage of those things, and I've done it as, much, as well. And, you know, I, I like me. I like the idea of me being alive. So I like the idea of having plates in my plate carriers. This has the Bowtash Battle Steels. I have a KD level four um, steel plate in my active shooter vest. And you might say, well, what's the difference? The difference is me running from here to there straight toward a gunman versus being tactical, maybe standing around for a couple hours. That vest is high speed, ready to go. I'm running straight towards somebody shooting a rifle, uh, shooting a gun, and realistically, there's there's going to be tactical things happening, but much less tactical than setting up a perimeter, moving into a building, kicking a door, a little bit more detailed. Um, and I don't want to get too far into that. That being said, one of the sad things about it was because of YouTube, the way they cropped the video or whatnot, you couldn't see my battle belt. And I talked a lot about the battle belt in the video, and I had a couple of people reach out and say, hey, what about your battle belt? Let's go. So here's my setup for my grab and go battle belt that I keep in my personal vehicle or I keep on honor about my person most of the time. And I'm gonna walk you through why and why I have no longer the AR magazines on my battle belt here. That was the specific question that got asked more than once actually. So I digress, let's go. I have my suppressor for my rifle in here, okay? I have a suppressor for a rifle in here because I don't have hearing protection on me. Now, taking nine millimeter to the ears, not the worst thing in the world, but my rifle was always in the vicinity where this plate or where this belt is. So that being said, I want to be able to go quiet. This is my 762 SDN. If my rifle has a can on it, then I can just go ahead and 86 this piece of gear, no problem. Moving next, I have a Safari Land. ALS retention holster, but it is set up, and I believe I misspoke during the video, it is set up with a Blade Tech TMMS, not a Molly Lock. I think I called it a Molly Lock. This is their TMMS, a Tactical Modular Mounting System, I think is what it stands for. It's an acronym. Great setup. Reason I have this, if I put a plate on a plate carrier or something, I can just pop it down, one button, one retention click, great, good to go. Next thing, I have a nub mod. Why do I have a nub mod? Just a bigger, broader spot where I can go ahead and place uh, my thumb, get a good purchase on it. I'm running my, usually my Agency Arm 17 with a comp on here. Um, kind of go back and forth on whether run it. I just like that gun a lot. It's not that it's super tactical. The reason I run that is because I run Glock 17 mags. Besides my professional life, my personal life, my training life, the things I do outside with 4Pro, most easily Glock 17s are just across the board the most popular gun. A lot of guys are going to 320s, this, that, and everything, but it seems like everybody always has Glock 17 mags or Glock mags on them. I like the 17. I think the ultimate gun is a Glock 17 with a grip drop to a 19. I do have one. It was made by ADC Arms but I'm running my 17, I just like it. I feel like I get a better purchase. That being said, as far as land, ALS number, why am I running triple retention, okay? I'm a big, 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 big fan of letting you guys know why I do something. It's not because I think I'm better than you, it's not because I think my way's better than you, but it's because I think in my experience training and the way that I've spoken with people and the things I've talked to them about, that some people lack focus on a direction or a path. Ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy mentality, okay? Ooh, new holster, I want that. Ooh, T-Rex, Lucas Bakken, I want that. Ooh, it, hang on a second. In my professional life, 
this is what I run. I run a retention holster that I have to clear the hood and then clear the weapon and pull it out. I want to be a ninja at all times on that setup. I want that to be like me going like this to reach for my eyes. I don't know if it's, it's might sound crazy to you guys, but if my eyes itch, I've never like accidentally poked myself in the eye like this, trying to do this. This has just become muscle memory for me. And of course, there's gonna be the guy that comes out of the woodwork and tells me there's no such thing as muscle memory. It's, it's actually neuromuscular, whatever, dude, go somewhere else. That being said, muscle memory, I've never not been able to do this. Yeah, I might've gotten like a little bit like off one way or another, but I've done it without even thinking about it. That's why I run this on my personal setup. Sure, could I be a little bit faster or a little more high speed and go to the range? Sure, could I loosen up and, and heat up my mag retention so that like I could do super fast sizzle videos and, and this, that, and the other thing? Yes, I could, but I'd rather be a ninja with this setup. I'd rather be really, really, really good with this setup because my life depends on it. I'm not on a range playing with my guns, playing with my rifles, with a camera guy running around me shooting videos. I'm actually betting my life on this stuff. Nothing against that stuff. That stuff is super cool. And if you're in a position where you can do it, dang, that's cool. But it's not me. My life is not that. So if your life is dedicated towards something else, or you know that you have a different path, focus on that. Ask yourself the questions. Is my gear helping me? Or is my gear hurting me? Or is my gear putting a band-aid on something that's more my problem or more my responsibility? Is there something I can change in my gear that will make me a better shooter or make me have to strive or train to be a better shooter? The argument can go back and forth. Oh, well, you put night sights on your Glock because you couldn't see your sight. Why don't you just try and learn how to shoot off the top of the slide? You can, you can go down any wormhole you want. But the reality is this is something that I want to be really good because odds are, Go look up at the statistics of the FBI, how many people that have a concealed carry permit get into a shooting. Then go look at how many shootings officers are involved in every year. Go look at every, how many military guys you know, in combat engage in shooting. This is what military guys are running most of the time. This is what law enforcement guys are running most of the time. And reality is, if somebody's rendered incapacitated and I have to grab something out of their, their pouch or their, their holster, it's happened before. I want to be a ninja with these. I want it to be a mindless exercise. We're gonna keep moving forward, okay? I have a couple of Grimlocks on mine, okay? I never know what I might have to like. Fasten something, grab something, secure something. I use these things for a lot of different things. It could be that I wanna just mount a set of keys. I have a little key thing that usually goes on here, but I've kind of gotten rid of it. I found that it was a little bit of a nuisance because I was using my gear, I was testing my gear. I was actually dressing up in my gear and trying it, okay? That being said, we're gonna move forward. Handcuff pouch, why handcuff pouch? This is on a battle belt that I keep as a part of an entire package. Mindset being, call out, I have to get from A to B, I don't wanna have to stop, go somewhere else, grab handcuffs, grab this, grab that. In my line of work, I may have to actually use them. I don't know why I see a lot of civilians running around with handcuffs. If it got to the point where you were shooting people, you're not gonna be putting them in handcuffs. Unless you're law enforcement or you're a closet freak and you'd like to put this shit on before you hang out with your girlfriend or wife or significant other, why, why do you have handcuffs? Is it because they look cool? Is it because you need them? Look cool, need them. Look cool, need them. That's what I want you to think about. Does it look cool? Does it serve a purpose? What is the purpose? Can I shred, or excuse me, shed some weight and maybe get some flex cuffs in the off chance that the stars align and I have to detain somebody, I don't have to arrest them or put them in handcuffs, which I see a lot of guys running handcuffs, which blows my mind. And I've asked them, hey, are you law enforcement? No. Are you? Anyway, we moving on. From the handcuff rig, I have my medical kit, okay? Now, this is a admin pouch that I can open up and I can pull 
that has a waterproof case that I have tons and tons and tons of stuff in. I've really not gone through this case. It's kind of a, it almost explodes when I open it because it's so packed full of stuff. And I hate packing it, but to help you guys out, I'm gonna go back into the, here's why I'm doing this. Maybe it helps you, okay? One of the few things or first things that I have in this kit is Benadryl. I have no allergies, but somebody really close to me that I care about does. So I have Benadryl in my kit. You might not. I have Benadryl in my kit. I have super glue, Steri strips, Advil. I have brown duct tape. I have gauze. I have eye patches. I have nose, um, nose strips, nasal strips. Really good adhesive. Think about it. Your nose is really oily and somehow it adheres to that. Good as a steri strip in a spare second or wound closure device. Also works great for a nasal strip if somebody's having trouble breathing and they're they're a little bit clogged up. Hey, dude, throw a nasal strip on there. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Just cool stuff to have in your kit, okay? I have a bunch of stuff. This is more of an ouchy boo-boo kit. The reason this is more of an ouchy boo-boo kit is because I have like a legit badass medical kit on my plate carrier. I am not going somewhere with this on without my plate carrier. It's just not gonna happen. And the reason for that is because I've kind of set myself up for success. Everything is mission critical. Everything is why, 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 okay? Not to get on Travis Haley's jock or anything, but I love his, you know, what's the why behind this? What's the why behind that? And I'm sure he stole that from somebody else. Otherwise, he thought about it, which is awesome. But realistically, you know, um, why do I have no quick clot in that little pouch? Because I have it on my kit that I know I will have on me. If for some reason I left the house and didn't have my plate carrier, I wouldn't have had this or vice versa. They don't leave each other's side. They are synergy. They are always together. They're best friends. But what I don't have in my plate carrier, I keep in that little case. That case is my ouchy boo-boo kit. That case is a, I have enough to put pressure on something. But realistically, I probably have clothing on that I can use as a makeshift bandage or gauze or some way to stop bleeding. But if something has broken bad and I have this on me, I have another option. Just backups for backups kind of thing. Dump pouch. Why do I have a dump pouch? Well, we talked about the fiasco with the Max Expedition in the last video. I have a dump pouch here for a lot of reasons. I might be dropping magazines. I might be dropping, uh, picking up a gun that somebody dropped. I might be picking up evidence that somebody dropped. I might be picking up Anything, who knows, keys, car keys. I might throw a bottle of water in there. I might throw snacks in there. It just depends. So I turn around, I'm hanging out. I gotta get access to something. Now I've got this big pouch ready to go that I can put stuff in. Let's say I pick up somebody's holster. Hey man, my holster fell off. Oh crap, he's probably gonna want that. Well, I could take this big old holster and put it in my dump pouch. Why do I not have the mini on there? Because I ended up feeling like, you know what? Considering that I might not have any pockets on me, any pockets whatsoever. I might be in jeans and have a badass t-shirt that your buddy Eric bought you. Love you, buddy. I need a bigger bag. I need a bigger dump pouch. It takes up this much more space, but it opens up way bigger. Cool. Magazines. Why do I have three Glock 17 magazines? Good question. Ask and answer. I'll answer you again. I always usually have a Glock 17 nearby me. I always usually have a friend that has a Glock 17. A lot of law enforcement agencies run Glock 17s. A lot of them. And that being said, I like my handgun stuff here and I like my rifle stuff here. When I use a rifle, my rifle's up here. It's easy for me to transition and get that magazine release here. When I run a handgun, it tends to be here or here. Rifle is up here, handgun's down here. It just kind of works naturally for me. That transition of bringing the gun in and getting the magazine, bringing the gun in and getting the magazine or throwing the magazine back in the dump pouch. But if I'm here, I don't know if you notice, I don't have to look where my pouches are because I've kind of trained with it and I know where this pouch is. I can just go for it. If I had to go to the middle one, I can kind of go right to the middle one. I don't know if you saw that. I did many tricks, any kind of camera photography. Why? Because I put this together and I train with it, I use it. If I need to get the last one, I can just grab the last one. I don't have to think about it. And the reason for that is, 
it's here. I've kind of developed that system of muscle memory and that system of training to where I can look down, look, look, glance, oh, that's where it's gotta go. I put the magazine in the gun. But that being said, why did I get my M4 mags off of here? Great question, here's the answer. M4 up here, okay, or M4 up here, or M4 up here, when I bring that gun and cant it and I bring it, it just, it was kind of the natural evolution, number one. Number two, I like to get low to the ground. Uh, true story, I had a plate carrier on and it was about this long in the front. I don't know why, it just ended up being about this big in the front and it was the worst thing that ever happened because I had to use binoculars and I just couldn't get comfortable. I could not get comfortable, I could not get low to the ground. Ended up taking the plate carrier off. That's super counterproductive. That's super not intuitive. That's not forward thinking. That's not forward progress, man. Okay? My gear was hurting my ability to perform. I know a guy that runs completely slick and he runs his M4 Max here because he likes to be really, really, really slick here. And he actually runs, not here, he runs his um, M4 Magazines here on a uh, Costa Lutus drop leg rig. It's just what he does. That's his reasoning. That's his why, because he wants this slick because of what I just told you. But for me, I'm comfortable having my magazines here. I like working off my workspace right here. And then these, they're kind of out of the way. They're down and down a little bit. Reason being, this is my backup. If I'm at the point where I have my plate carrier, I have a rifle, I have a plate carrier, I have three M4 mags right here, three AR-15 mags right here, or six AR-15 mags, or two AR-15 mags, like that guy, and I've got my handgun out, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Unless, unless I'm moving around cars or doing something crazy or in a really, really tight, confined building, I've had a malfunction, I've expended ammo, but we're, we're in a bad spot. So why does that mean that I put my magazines here? I just like working off my chest. That being said, it's easier for me to fight here than to fight here. If I have a big rifle in my hand and I've got to hold this weight in suspension here and open up my body to get a magazine here, physiologically, this sucks. Because if somebody can get their hand here or close the gap and touch and hold on to this, and I'm holding this rifle, your body's mechanics are fighting against you. You can tear a peck very easily from this position if you try and pull from here. Especially when you've got to kind of contort, you can tear your shoulder, you can tear your front delts, you can tear a labrum, okay? You can tear a lot of things in your shoulder, rotator cuff. If you've got to kind of come up and twist and pull this up and bring it in, I know you're like, that's stupid. I've seen this guy just pull it out. Just think about it. I'm not shooting at a piece of paper. I'm not standing there with a camera guy around me hanging out. I'm in a life or death situation. I don't give a shit what the shot timer says. Okay? I don't care. I don't care if this dude's faster on the range. This dude hadn't been punched in the face yet. You know what I'm saying? This dude's been playing on a gun range. This dude hasn't had to break up two people fighting with knives in their hands. Or this guy fighting with fighting his wife. And It's a different world. This is my why. It might not be yours. I get why somebody wants to be super fast and do this and do that. Do that with a 220 pound pissed off dude high on meth on you. Tell me how that works for you. Now, is it easier to do this? Maybe not. But it's a lot easier for me to back up and punt and punch this dude in the face from here or, or go right back to my rifle and use my rifle as a, as a weapon than it is when I have my hand all the way down here. Make sense to you? I hope it does. That being said, we're going to move on. I have Blade Tech Magazine, uh, or not Blade Tech Magazine, Blade Tech Molly Locks that I ran when I was running the rifles. Now I have the STAC Kai Wee K Y W I W T F straps. So they're the Kai Wee W T F straps. And I've got my Glock 17 round mags. Gloves. Gloves. Why? Why do you need gloves, dude? Why do you want to look like a super high speed operator guy? Well, teaching aid. Pull the bolt out so I don't do that thing where I look like a dopey. 
dopey guy. This is a piston rifle. This is a hand grip. This is where I keep my hand. On a piston rifle, this is where all the heat, all the gas, everything is expended. Right here. So as I'm here doing my thing, pressure switch, or gripping my rifle and doing my thing, this gets hot. Very hot. The last thing I want is to have to worry about being a little girl, or excuse me, a little boy, because God knows now, if, is be a, a little terrible person who complains about his little fingies hurt, okay? Or his little fingies are burning. I've got a little clip. I can't remember where I got this. I got it off eBay, but they're on Amazon. It's a little glove holder. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. Even if you have non-high speed operator guy gloves, okay, and you have something on this hand that you can try and use to mitigate that heat and that you can still run and do your stuff and press your switches and do all that cool guy stuff, works great. Your right hand, you might not want one. You might want the ability to feel the trigger a little bit better. You might cut your fingertip out of your right glove. I know guys in the military that when they were deployed, they always had one finger missing on their glove. Usually this one. Go figure, I wonder why. But that being said, my why is always gonna be different from your why. I don't know what you do for a living. I don't know what you wanna do for a living. There might be a reason why you do something that you can comment, hey, I'm in this field, or this is what I do, or I live here, and this is why I'm running this setup. Comment below. Tell me why you're using your stuff the way you're using your stuff. But if you ask me a question, why I'm running my gear, and you get offended by the answer, shame on you, okay? Or if you watch my video and you don't like why I'm running my gear this way, but you have a legitimate reason why you think I should run something different, please tell me. I don't know everything. I know about this much on the scale of life. There's a way bigger world out there than I will ever experience. Unfortunately, bigger than any of us will ever experience. So if you can give me any kind of information or teach me or help me, by all means, I, I'm a big boy, I can take criticism. But what I can't take is when you got guys that are telling people how to run their setup because this is why they're running it and that's what they need to do. No, they're stupid. That's, that's a toxic person, okay? This setup may be the dumbest thing on the planet to you. Running a suppressor here may be really stupid to you. You may think, oh my God, well, why would you run a suppressor there? Why don't you just keep it on your rifle? You're right, in a perfect world, my suppressor would always be on my rifle, but, Perfect example, I'm cleaning this rifle. I had to order a new SR-07. I don't know where the suppressor is to this rifle. Wait a minute. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Voila. I'm 4 Pro. And this has been way longer than four minutes. Question, comment, concern, please let me know. Thanks, guys. Oh, and subscribe and all that.